Hey, friend, Chris here from White Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today is an exciting day, and that's because the latest update for both versions of Logic Pro, Logic Pro for Mac 11.2 and Logic Pro for iPad 2.2, have just dropped in the App Store. And like usual, there is a slew of new enhancements, bug fixes, new features that I think a lot of us are going to love. So there's a lot to cover in today's video. I'm going to start out with Logic Pro for Mac 11.2. I'm going to point out as I go, which of these features that are in the Mac version are also in the iPad version. And then I'll work my way into Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. So let's dig into it. One of the standout features of this set of updates has to be the enhancements to Stem Splitter. If you recall, Stem Splitter was debuted with Logic Pro for Mac 11 and Logic Pro for iPad 2. And as the name implies, Stem Splitter provided you with a native way to extract up to four different instrument groups or stems from a single file. Originally, Stem Splitter could extract vocals, drums, bass, and an other category, which was a catch all for all the other instruments that may be in the single file or mix. But with this new set of updates, you can now extract two other stem categories from a file. So I'm going to right click on this file and then go down to Processing and choose Stem Splitter. As you can see in the dialog that pops up, we have, of course, our vocals, drums, bass, and other categories, but you can now also extract guitar and piano. Also at the top of the dialog is a new preset drop-down menu with which you can choose different presets or common combinations of stem splitting. For example, if you want just the vocals out of a file, you can just choose the acapella preset. And boom, just the vocal stem will be selected. There's also a preset for instrumental. So if you want everything but the vocals, Stem Splitter will actually create a submix or a single file that includes all of the instruments except for the vocals, as noted here in the submix menu. You could choose vocals and instrumental, so a dedicated vocal stem plus a combined file of all of the other instruments. You can also choose vocals, instruments, and drums, vocals, instruments, drums, and bass, as well as separate all of these stems individually. I'll choose to separate all of the stems so we can really hear what each one sounds like with this new version of Stem Splitter. All right, so you can see I have vocals, drums, bass, guitar, piano, and other. And let's take a listen to all of these stems together so that you can get the context of the song as a whole, and then we'll listen to each individual stem. Take a listen. Cool. I think that gives us a vibe for the song. There's actually a whole other main vocal that I have not included in this bounce, but let's now start to explore the individual stems. I also thought it might be interesting to compare this new version of Stem Splitter in 11.2 against the previous version of Stem Splitter in 11.1.2. So you can see there are four stems here from the previous version of Logic Pro, and we're going to compare each. We'll start out with just the vocals here from 11.1.2. Then we'll take a listen to the 11.2 version. Here we go. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let's hear the new version. I would say that's a pretty significant improvement to Stem Splitter over the previous version of Logic Pro. Let's now take a listen to the drums, both before and after. Right, so the drums sound pretty good. Let's take a listen to after. I love that the lightning crash or thunder crash is lumped in with the drums, but I don't mind it. And I'm actually really impressed how clear it sounds in the stem splitted version. Let's hear the bass.
All right, and 11.2. All right, and after that, of course, in 11.1.2, we only had an other category. So I'll play it right around down here where we have, you know, piano and guitar going on. Take a listen. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I intentionally wanted the guitars, the piano, the bass, the drums, everything to kind of like hit as one and kind of meld into a single sound. So it's pretty interesting that Stem Splitter here actually was able to figure out what's a drum, bass, guitar, keys. If we take a listen. It even got that slow down fade that I had on the bass. That's pretty awesome. Take a listen to the drums real quick. So there is a kick sound plus a thunderclap. We take a listen to the guitar. You can hear that tape slow down. The piano. That's pretty cool. And then the other category. So the catch all for everything else. But so I don't sell it short. Let's take a listen to the piano down here. I'm super impressed by this new version of Stem Splitter. It's pretty amazing. This is built right into Logic Pro. And don't forget, these enhancements for Stem Splitter are also available in Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. The next major feature for this new set of updates is Flashback Capture. A little less obvious, but we've actually had a version of Flashback Capture for many years in Logic Pro, but it was only an option for MIDI. Maybe you remember it by its previous name, Capture Recording. For example, let's say you were just listening to your project and you play an idea with a software instrument and your MIDI controller, and it's awesome. But man, you weren't recording, right? Well, you could press on the Capture Record button or use Key Command Shift and R to capture that performance before it disappeared. Well, now with Logic Pro for Mac 11.2 and Logic Pro for iPad 2.2, you can now also flashback capture your audio performances too. So for example, I've muted the bass stem in this audio recording, and I'm going to play along with the Novation Peak synth and just see if I have a better idea for the bass. Okay, I think I have an idea, but I wasn't recording, right? Well, now if I hold shift and press R, there's my audio recording of my synth. And right there, you can see there's my region with capture in the title of the region. So you know it's a flashback capture of this audio recording. But don't worry, flashback capture is also available for Logic Pro for iPad 2, so you can capture those audio and MIDI recordings as they come up. Next up is the brand new search for and select track feature. Now, let's say you're working on a project much like the project I have on screen. There's a lot going on, and you're searching for just one track in the pile. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just type in the name of the track that you're trying to find, and Logic Pro would automatically locate and select that track for you? Well, now it's possible. I'm going to use the key command, Control, Command, and T, to bring up the search and select track menu. And I'm trying to find the shaker in my project. I think track 34 is the shaker I'm looking for. Let me hit return, and boom, there's my shaker track right at the top, selected right there, and Logic Pro has found it. Let me try again, and I'm going to look for the vocals, in this case, the verse vocal. Right at the bottom here, it's highlighted and selected for me. Search for and select track can also be found in Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. Just tap on the menu right above the tracks area to search and select, or by using a key command. Now, I want to bring your attention to the control bar. Notice I have the master volume fader in the control bar. And of course, if you've used Logic Pro for any length of time, you know you can customize the control bar and display 
to include the master volume. So this is an easy way to adjust the level and volume of your entire project with one fader. Personally, I don't use the master volume fader at all, and I usually just disable this option in the modes and functions column, but now there's a brand new option. So if you don't use the master volume fader, like I don't, but you would like to see the output meters for your project, you can now choose to see just the meter without the fader. This can provide you with a bird's eye view of the overall level of your project. And this is available not just for stereo projects, but for surround and spatial audio projects as well. Surround and spatial audio projects will also show you all the level meters from this one location, including the height channels. After that, if we take a look in the mixer, perhaps you sometimes feel the faders are a little too short to be able to make fine adjustments in terms of levels. Well, now if you go to the view menu in the mixer, there's a new option for long faders. And check it out, now the faders double in size, providing you with much more precise movement over the different levels of your individual tracks. So you can see this is much more akin to like a 100 millimeter throw of an actual fader. And the meters also double in size. Also, now you can move chords in the chord track without having to open the global track lanes each and every time you wanna move a chord. Notice in the timeline here, I have many chords in this project. And if I click, hold and drag anywhere in the timeline, I move the playhead. However, if you hold command and click on a chord, I can move the chord without having to open the global track lanes again each and every time. Definitely a time saver. On top of that, the relatively new Quantec Room Simulator has some new controls. Under the secondary tab is an option to reverse the phase of the first reflections of the reverb. There's also a brand new option to drive the converters of the Quantec Room Simulator. So if you take a listen, I'll start to drive the converter. I'll reduce the dry level all the way down so we're hearing just the reverb. And the Quantec Yardstick's correlation patterns now have the option to be turned off. These updates to the Quantec Room Simulator can also be found in Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. And for those who maybe could use a little assistance in keeping track of what's going on in their projects or even creative assistance, Macs with Apple Intelligence enabled can take advantage of writing tools for both the Project Notepad and Track Notepad. There's a dedicated writing tools button here. Right here, I could use the many different writing tools for proofreading, summarizing, key points, a table, or a list. But an interesting use case is to use Apple Intelligence and ChatGPT to help you creatively. So I'd like to type in, please write a verse about waffles. All right, so we're going to use ChatGPT. And boom, there's my verse all about waffles. Let me copy and paste it into the notepad. Surround and spatial audio projects have also seen some significant updates. Notice next to the surround and 3D object panners is a new slider. This is for direct elevation control right from the mixer. I'll double click on this 3D object panner and notice as I adjust this slider to the right of the 3D object panner, I can adjust the elevation. The same for surround panners. So as I increase this, under the spherical view, we can see the object go closer to the top of the room. On top of that, the Dolby Atmos plugin has also seen updates. Now, instead of selecting from many different versions of the Apple renderer, whether it be with head tracking or personalized spatial audio, now you can just choose the Apple renderer. And now there are four buttons underneath the monitoring format dropdown to customize this playback. For example, I can enable head tracking, enable or disable personalized spatial audio, Plus, I can choose between either listening to the Apple renderer in music mode or in movie mode. So if you're working on music for games or TV, you probably want to use the Apple TV or movie version of the Apple renderer. There's also a brand new version of the 2.0 monitoring format, 2.0 Direct. This is an approximation of your Dolby Atmos mix in stereo, and you can actually bounce the direct version of your Atmos mix as the stereo mix if you don't want to have to mix a separate stereo project. Whereas the 2.0 from 5.1 down mix is also an approximation of your Dolby Atmos mix in stereo. This version is first rendered as a 5.1 mix before it's then rendered again as a 2.0 or stereo mix. Okay, so we've covered so much when it comes to Logic Pro for Mac and I'm pointing out along the way some of these major features that have also appeared in Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. 
but Logic Pro for iPad 2.2 also has some updates specific to the iPad version. Here, a major new feature is the ability to learn MIDI so that you can take control of your Logic projects from a MIDI controller. It's simple. Just click on the menu button in the upper right-hand corner of Logic Pro for iPad and tap on the brand new Learn MIDI option. A dialog pops up, and here, just adjust the control in Logic Pro, then adjust one of the controls on your controller. And boom, now your controller is set up for that function. And you could also specify if this control assignment that you set can be used with any focus track or is pinned to a specific track, meaning that control is only for that assignment for a dedicated track. If you click on the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner and select to customize the control bar, and under the other menu, you can add the options for both export and learn MIDI right in the control bar. There's also the option to non-destructively normalize region gain of the regions in your Logic Pro for iPad projects. By double tapping on a region, you can select normalize region gain, which basically allows you to adjust the level of a region based on either loudness or a peak value. This has been available in Logic Pro for Mac for a long time, but notice the language is slightly different this time around. On top of all this new stuff, there's new sound packs for both versions. There's so much to enjoy here. I hope you get to, and I'll check you for more later. Take care.